All right. We can uh, get into the word today. So um, I'm I'm uh, here to present something to you. This is a season that we are celebrating Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ. And uh, we see so many new things happening in and out. And uh, um, I don't know, I was watching a Hallmark movie last night till 2 o'clock. You know, that's a different story. <laughs> Pray for me. Pray for <laughs> so before that Hallmark demon gets me. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I'm just making fun. But anyway, um, oh this this season of celebration, this season of warmth, and this season of uh, uh, um, remembering the goodness of God, the love and the compassion of God. I am thankful for all those things. But the true gift, you know, the... The beautiful story of the Bible uh, um, when Jesus was born, though we depict uh, uh, the coming of wise men, there are two pet peeves, uh, I guess the facts from the Bible I want to present to you before I move on. If I were to ask you how many wise men came, everybody says, yeah, three, three of them came. Show me from where. In the Bible, it doesn't give any evidence, any proof that there were three wise men. The gifts they gave were three gifts. That doesn't mean three people came. Amen? Okay, there could be ten people giving all gold. Gold, myrrh, and frankincense, right? Those are the three gifts that were given. And those three gifts, out of those three gifts, uh, how many ever? I don't. We don't know those numbers. So, I, I, I don't know, I, I have a nativity scene with three wise men, but that's tr really not true to uh, 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 the depiction that Bible gives us. That's the first thing. The second thing is, um, we always uh, depict as the wise men have come to see Jesus while he was in the manger. The truth be told, he was in his house. So he, Jesus, was almost according to uh, the Bible, and if we study it, because Herod, when he sends a decree to kill the babies, he sends a decree to kill kids that are two and under. So from there, we can uh, guess, kind of, Jesus might be two years old. We don't know. But he's definitely not a baby. Because when they came, they were not in the manger. So those are just two facts, but if you still want to have a nativity scene and bring the wise men at the same time, do whatever you like. I'm not going against it, but that's not, um, that's not what the Bible says. Let's learn those facts also. So one of the main things uh, I see in there is we, pro we, we um, in that we have a beautiful communication that happens that God gave his only begotten son. Amen? That God gave his only begotten son. The thing that I really, really like about the wise men is this. That they gave gifts to God. They gave gifts to God. When, you know, when, when we have a, an opportunity, we can study about all those three things. Gold, myrrh, and frankincense. They all deal with different things. One is a purified product, gold. And, and frankincense used for purification. And all, all, all these products are, have some significance. I'm not going to go into those things. But what, I am, what I'm going after is that there was a gift exchange that happened. Cre during Christmas, we do this thing. We do an exchange of gifts. We give each other gifts. Uh, should we do it? Should we not do it? I'm not your household leader. You do whatever you want in your house. But here, uh, w w w what I am trying to go after is, there was an exchange, a reciprocation from mankind to the biggest gift they ever received from God. So my, my uh, point here is, 
even though Christ is born into our lives, even though we are celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, and we are thankful for what all he is, the best thing we can do to him is to reciprocate back by giving him. What can you give is the most important thing. What are the gifts that would make a difference in his life? He says, if you obey my law, if you obey, if you do my commandments, if you act according to my word, that brings me a great delight. So in other words, if we are, if we want to give a true gift to our God and Savior, our obedience to his will, our obedience to his way of doing things is going to mean a lot. Amen? So how many of us are excited about giving back to God? I want to give back to God. I want to, I want to give my gift to Him. You know, maybe we are short on money. Maybe we are short on things. Maybe we are short on time. But one thing for sure you and me can learn is this. There are so many things in the Bible that God offers us as we apply them, as we walk in them, and as we are obeying those statutes, then we are giving unto the Lord. So from that point of view, I want us to study on something that we can give back to God. There should be a giving back. You know, <laughs> the beauty of God, giving back to God is through receiving. When we receive what is given and it is being processed in us, it brings forth the glory. You bring me glory by you bearing fruit. Amen? By you bearing fruit. That's what the Bible says. That's what God says in his word. But apart from me, you cannot bear fruit. So, so um, if you want to bring God some glory, it has to be done through him, not by all of all by us. We utilizing him, we bringing him into our lives, we letting him come out of us. That is the gift that we can give him. So one of those things that I want us to study on today is one of the things that I, I like for us to focus on that would help us in growing the way God wants us to grow. The title of my message today is Weakness versus Weak Moments. Weakness versus Weak Moments. Anybody here have weaknesses? Any weakness? Any weakness? Yeah? <laughs> have you ever experienced weak moments? Any one of us have experienced weak moments in our lives? We all do. So both of, do, both of those things are very familiar to us in every day-to-day -day life. We are familiar with those things. But I always, as I always mention, I would like for us to go at these things from the Bible point of view. Weakness is often looked down when we look at people with weaknesses and, uh, and such. We always look, 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 them, uh, look at them as people... You know, our, when we look at the people in the world that do not want God, that, that proclaim to be atheists or things like that, they often try to claim us as people who believe in God as weak people. Because you couldn't walk by yourself, so you are using this clutch, crutch or whatever you want to say. He, you are using God as, as, as because uh, you, you are too weak. You couldn't run your life, so you need God. Or in a everyday life, we, we look at signs of weaknesses around us, and we try to uh, uh, shun them, or we, we even try to put them down. Even our own selves, we put ourselves down when we, are, when we are facing some weaknesses in our lives. But that is not how God deals with them. Before I get into the weaknesses side, I would like for us to study about weak moments. So at the end, I will conclude them both so, we can, uh, uh, so you can catch on what I am going after. Go with me to 2 Samuel 11th chapter.
in the Old Testament, 2 Samuel, 11th chapter, starting from verse 1. Second Samuel 11, verse 1. Then it happened in the spring at the time when kings go, go out to battle that David sent Job and uh, his servants with him and all Israel and they destroyed the sons of Ammon and besieged Rabbah but David stayed in Jerusalem. Now when evening came, David arose from his bed and walked around on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful in appearance. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? David sent messengers and took her, and when she came to him, he lay with her, and when she had purified herself from her uncleanness, she returned to her house. I'm, I'm going to label this incident as weak moment. Uh, I, I, I just want to differentiate between weak moment and weakness is, is David didn't have a weakness with women. Throughout the Bible we don't see that, the case. This is the only one in one place where we saw David crossing the line. Other places we don't see him do that. We never see him uh, committing adultery. He get, got the wife according to the law, according to what it uh, said. He, he, he did that, but I this is the only one place. And because of this, he paid a big price down the line. So this is one of the uh, worst things that have happened in David's life. And in this, what happened uh, uh, was, um, it was that moment, what happened to him. He, he didn't have the weakness, but it was a weak moment for him. That moment caught him. And that, that destroyed in a way for him. He almost got destroyed. If it wasn't for God's grace, he would have been annulled. We wouldn't be talking about David. Weak moments can also be used by devil to steal, kill, and destroy. Weak moments. He would have been destroyed. Everything that he have built, the empire that he built, it would have been gone just like that. It's all because of this one weak moment. He is not a weak, weak person. You know he killed Goliath. You know he waged wars. You know he went through so much of hell and still came back up. He went through wilderness when Saul was trying to kill him. He was a target every single day of his life. And he went through that. He won through it. He stood through it. Even though he was a strong man, he couldn't avoid weak moments. So by this I want to conclude is, no matter how strong you might be, no matter how good you are and your relationship with God is, you will be facing weak moments. Weak moments are kind of an inevitable thing. Kind of. Because the moments come to you, your reaction is what matters to it. I'm on a I'm going to go more uh, into it in a bit. So I'm, I'm here to conclude. David is not a man of weakness. He is not a weak, weak person. Yet he was attacked in a weak moment. So I, if David fell, fell, fell for it, you and me, we got to be on a watch. Why do you think God presented this to us? So we can follow David? So we can learn from David. The weak moments that were there, you know, many times Bible people take the Bible uh, and say, oh, okay, if that person have done, what's wrong with me? I'm after all, after all a man. If David did it, I'm after all a man. That is good and true, but at the same time, that is not the whole truth. 
The whole truth is, uh, uh, you don't have to. God provided David to us so we can avoid what David did. We don't have to fall prey for the devil or we don't have to fall prey for the weak moments that you and me will be facing. So uh, uh, the, the, that's one thing you ha we, we want to keep in mind. But other part that I want to present to you is the weakness. What, I, what does Bible say about weakness? Go with me to the book of uh, second, uh, did I say that's that's wrong. That's uh, Second Corinthians. The book of Second Corinthians. Twelfth chapter. Starting from verse 7. Second Corinthians. Twelfth chapter. Verse 7. Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, for, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. There is a lot that we need to understand from this passage. What it says is, many people attribute this as God giving a thorn in Paul's flesh. But you don't see the evidence in this text. It was given to me. Who gave? There was no mention of that. Who gave that to you? There was no mention of it. Okay? Uh, there was given me, given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me and to keep me from exalting myself. So I'm going to leave it there. Concerning this, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. Look at that, that sentence. I like it so much. Gee, Paul doesn't say, take it away from me. But God, he was imploring to God that it might leave me, that, 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 that thorn in his flesh might leave him. So from there, you, you have to understand his prayer, he wasn't acknowledging that God gave it to me. He was asking God to get rid of that. He was asking God to help me out of this thing. So the beautiful answer to him that comes from the Lord is this. And he said to me, the Lord said to him, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody that has a weakness, that's a glorious moment for us. That's a glorious moment for us. If we have a weakness, a weakness that could be a physical weakness, that could be a mental weakness, that could be a financial weakness, that could be a physical weakness, or spiritual weakness, it doesn't matter what kind of a weakness is, there is an opportunity when there is a weakness, there is an opportunity for you to boast not about the weakness, but because the, so that the power of God may dwell in me. The power of God will dwell in me. So that, that, that is what is happening. That is what God wants. Uh, uh, um, God wants us to understand about weaknesses. When we have something weak in our lives, in our bodies. You know, it is an opportunity to see God's strength at work. To see God's power at work. He, he goes on, come, come, continuing. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties. 
for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, I am strong. For when I am weak, I am strong. The same place and the same area where you are being weak is the same place God can show off his strength. So we need to understand here is um, are we looking at weakness and failure and stopping there or are we looking at it as an opportunity for God to shine his grace upon us? Look at this thing. Jesus, when, 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 when uh, Paul was uh, asking God, imploring God, he was asking, he was begging, God, let this weakness be gone from my life. Let this be, le le let it leave me. He asked for three times the weakness to go away, but it didn't. But what, it, what happened there was instead, G God didn't take it away from him. Instead, Jesus offered him, my grace is sufficient. What I, w there was a time that I heard a preacher preach this thing that, that doesn't make any sense to me. God, what, what he was said, what, what he mentioned was, he said, he made a statement saying, okay, what God is trying to say is, I'm not going to heal you, you have to live with it. I'm not going to set you free, you have to live with it. So he was even giving an example that was one of the most weirdest things I have ever heard. It's like if you have a nail in your tire, what would you do? Would you live with it? You will find a place to repair it or replace it. Amen? The same thing, a thorn in his flesh. It is draining energy from him. It is dra draining the God, God's purpose from him. Now, now that, that preacher have uh, said that God is trying to keep the thorn in you. And, and he wants you to continue with the thorn. No, that is not what he is saying here. Instead, what he is saying is, when you are weak, I have my power that you can utilize and get over it. Overcome that weakness. I'm here to conclude a statement here. Weaknesses are for you to overcome. Weaknesses are for you to overcome. God's power, God's grace is available for me. My grace is sufficient. For what? For you to jump out of it. For you to utilize it. I am weak here, God. I cannot do this thing. My body is not functioning. My liver was not functioning. My kidneys are not functioning. They are weak. My heart is weak, God. That's where I need your grace. I am weak in comprehending, God. That's where I need your grace. Not for me to stay weak, but for me to get stronger. Hallelujah. God doesn't want us to stay weak, but he wants us to get stronger. Otherwise, he won't be giving you strength in your weakness. Strength is offered unto us in our weakness so we can overcome our weakness. Isn't that what medicine does? What does medication do? It helps us through our weaknesses, through our ailments. They try to boost your immunity. Things that has to work to bring you back to normal position. That is what the medication is supposed to do. Of course, I know we have a lot of complications in there. But the objective always is to bring it back to function. That is what God is. That is what God, God's grace is for us. It is to get us out of our weakness, but not for us to stay in our weaknesses. God acknowledges our weaknesses. God acknowledges our shortcomings. God knows our insults. God knows our inferiorities. God knows our infirmities. And he gives us his grace. And he says, my grace is sufficient. Apply it no matter where you are. No matter what kind of a situation you are in. If you are in an insult, instead of running and hiding yourself in that insult, come claim the grace of God. 
right exactly where you were insulted. I have the grace of God right now to overcome this. Weaknesses are there for you to overcome. Never look at your weakness as a place where you have to dwell forever. God is not taking this away. This is a beautiful example. I don't know how many times I prayed like Paul. Paul remembered praying three times. Maybe I prayed 300 times. I don't know. When I asked God to take away some of my addictions. Let this be gone from my life, God. This issue with anger, let it be gone from me, God. Let this issue with short temper, let it be gone from me, Lord. It never worked. It never worked. But the moment I realized this scripture, that God is giving me his grace. When I am weak, I am strong. In my weakness is his strength, his power made perfect. So then I started grabbing to this thing. Right now, I have God's grace to overcome this weakness. Whether it be an addiction, whether it be a, 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 an ailment, whether it be a, 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 a disorder, it doesn't matter what it might be. Start grabbing onto the grace of God. I have the grace to overcome this thing. My grace, God's grace is sufficient for me. I don't need new things here. I don't need no new anointing here. There is no such thing as new anointing. There is only one anointing. There is no such thing. There is not, nothing like that. He is giving us his grace. He emptied himself. There is nothing more to pour. Every bit of it is emptied. There is nothing left. So now, the grace that God poured upon us, he says, it is sufficient. For what? For your weakness. So I'm here to encourage every one of us, in a time of weaknesses, I want us to draw from this grace. I have God's grace. And that grace is sufficient. And I am overcoming this. Don't look at weaknesses and acknowledge them. Oh, I have an issue. I am like this. I am like that. We, we try to label ourselves like that. If it is not lining up with God's will, if, it is, if our character is not lining up with God's word, we better correct. We better change. We better use it. Use God's grace. Oh, I have issues with anger. No, you don't. No, you don't. God didn't create you with that. God never created you with, with, with that weakness. Instead, you inherited from your other father, your stepdad that, that abused you so long. When you were a sinner, you inherited from the devil. He was an abuser. He abused you. And in that, we inherited that character from him. So now we need to understand this is not something I have to tolerate. But instead, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overcome this. I'm going to go beyond this. I'm going to step over this. That is how we are to look at weaknesses. We got to look at uh, uh, anytime you got laid off in a job, anytime something happens, go, go grab the grace. I have grace to overcome this thing. I have grace to overcome this weakness, this gap that is in my life. This negativity that is in my life. I have grace to overcome this. You have a family struggle, family trouble that is going on. When is this going to go away? When is this going to leave? It will never leave until you, uh, uh, until you start accepting the grace of God into your life. Start utilizing the grace of God into your life. I have the power of God to overcome this. To, 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 to bless this. To to oh. To uh, make a difference in in, uh, uh, in in my life, I have I have what it takes. I have the grace of God to bring my family back. I have the grace of God to pray over my children. I have the grace of God to seek God's increase over my life. I have the grace of God to pastor over this church. I have it. I have it. I have the grace because I know I am weak. I am falling. I am failing. Yet, I don't have to stop there because the grace of God. So now, I'm, I'm going to conclude with this statement. 
uh, uh, weaknesses are to overcome. Another thing we have to understand with weakness, one of the most important thing, Paul acknowledged he had a weakness. He was honest with it, honest with himself. We see so many people running around trying to defend themselves and not even acknowledge their own weaknesses. We do that ourselves. We do that to our, us too, that we don't acknowledge, God, I have a weakness. I have an issue. And we don't acknowledge it. And in, 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 in through that, what are we missing? When we are not acknowledging our weaknesses, we are not drawing from the strength of God. We are not utilizing the strength of God. And when we do not utilize the strength of God, we will not be able to, to, to take advantage or, or become the strong person that God has created us to be. We don't see the traces of this weakness throughout the, his life. Paul, I believe from my understanding, from my experience with God, I believe he used the grace and he overcame this weakness that he had been encountered. The thorn in the flesh didn't stay with him all his life. He had to overcome. He overcame it by utilizing the grace. And now, and now we studied about the weak moments. Weak moments are something that you and me need to avoid. We have to avoid it, you know. We can avoid I wish I didn't say that. You could have the same thought before. Let us be prepared more. Let us be more in, a, in, in, in advanced preparation. There might come this thing. There might come this thing. Be slow to react. Oftentimes we have to be slow. One of the most uh, 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 dangerous issues that I don't know about you for me is anger. Anger gets me. I get riled up too quick. So now, I go to the scripture where it says, be slow to anger. Never react in anger. I take my time. I, I ponder on it. I pray. I consult with the Holy Spirit before I react. Take time to consult with God, no matter what kind of a situation we have. David did that amazingly when, it went, when he went to war. Whatever he did, he consulted with God. Should I go for this war? If he had consulted again here, should I even do this with this woman? Had he consulted with God, it would have been a different story. Amen? Would you agree on that? The same thing is true for us. To avoid weak moments, we have to have a constant fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We have to constantly have a communication with him. God, should I go now? Should I do this? Should I not do this? Should I? Every single thing. Sometimes even the good things that you might feel like, this is good. I can do this. What's wrong with it? But you might end up being in a problem. It doesn't matter what it is. You Many times we don't even realize that that was a weak moment. Many times you don't. Oh, I wish I didn't. I, I, I thought for myself many times, I'm a man. Why did I say that, that the people misunderstood me? Misrepresented me? If I had I not said that, it would have been a totally different story. I don't have to live in regrets, but instead I can live with that affirmation every day that God works in me. And God, God's God, God is constantly there to help me out. Constantly there to direct my steps. Steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. I want to utilize that in my life. Today I want us to give God a big joy by us utilizing God's grace in overcoming the weakness. And on the other side, for us to utilize God's, God's continual stay in us, abode in us to overcome weak moments, to avoid weak moments. It may not, you know, the same circumstance, you can just walk away from it. Jesus didn't take a battle when he was falsely being accused, remember? He was silent. That was a weak moment. He could have, how dare you say this about me? He could have just done that. 
if he chooses to be quiet, if he chooses not to answer him, if he chooses not even to defend himself. That if he had done it, it would have been a weak moment. Today we can learn from that, that weak moments can be avoided. It is because it is all dependent on our reaction. There is nothing wrong with the woman taking a bath there. She does that every day. It's not a new thing. But he, when he saw that and how he reacted to it, is what caused the problem. So weak moments can be avoided by us. Let's utilize the fellowship of the Holy Spirit in, in, in avoiding the weak moments in our lives. So with, uh, with this, uh, I'm going to... So a weakness is a condition. Okay? Weak moment is a situation. It's a situation. You can play it as you want. The many times I walked into fire... I came out untouched because I didn't give into that situation. The many times I could have picked up a fight, but I chose not to. That was my weak moment. It helped me. I pray every day I can make more of those decisions instead of less of them. I don't have to react. I don't have to blab. I don't have to say my final word. I, it will help even in our marriages. And uh, the last statement, weak moments are to avoid and weaknesses are to overcome. With that, I will end. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Amen. Boy, is that so true.